150 years. 150 years. Hallelujah. It is humbling to preach on such an occasion. I stand here this morning with the full awareness that I am but one in a long line of pastors. Past, present, and future who have been called to serve Hyde Park Union Church. And perhaps it is because of this occasion or perhaps because we're so close in liturgical time to All Saints Day, but I'm also standing in the awareness of the saints of Hyde Park Union Church. That great cloud of witnesses that is with us at all times, but especially so on this morning. An anniversary is an opportunity to both reflect and to vision. To reflect on what has come before and to envision what lies ahead. It is in the spirit of that first part, reflection, that I turned to a little gray booklet. I meant to bring it with me this morning, but not everything made it into the car. I made it, Noah made it, Theo made it, the diaper bag made it, the little booklet didn't make it, but that's okay. You can imagine it, imagine a little gray booklet. And this booklet holds the printed sermons, prayers, and speeches from Hyde Park Union Church's centennial celebration in 1974. There are many things written in there that caught my attention, but one quote in particular stopped me in my tracks. The following comes from a sermon that was delivered during that weekend by Reverend E. Spencer Parsons, who served as pastor here from 1959 to 1965. He said, there is little in our national life that hasn't been shaken during the past decade or so, and there is no sign that the shaking is over. Through all of this, the churches have tried to speak the truth, to bind the wounds of those embattled by conflict, and be faithful to the gospel of love. At times we have done well, at other times we have failed. Yet through it all, we have dared to believe that somehow and in some way the events of this era could be understood, modified, illumined, judged, and perhaps even be redeemed by that event so long ago which we identify as the event of Jesus Christ. This quote stopped me in my tracks because it preaches just as well this morning as I imagine it did 50 years ago. Reverend Parsons in his sermon goes on to name some of the shaking and quaking forces of national life at that time he names the civil rights movement, the Vietnam War, food insecurity in the neighborhood, and the crisis of confidence in the government following the Watergate scandal. Racial injustice, war, food insecurity, crisis of confidence in the government, I'd add a few things to the list. Climate change, the endangerment of reproductive rights, the threats to the LGBTQ plus community, to name just a few, but largely the same forces that shook the world 50 years ago are shaking it today. Now right about now you might be thinking, isn't this supposed to be a celebratory sermon? Well, yes, but it's a celebratory sermon where we tell the truth. 
We tell the truth that the same forces of empire that existed 50 years ago and 100 years ago and 150 years ago exist today. And, and we celebrate the fact that Hyde Park Union Church still dares to believe that the gospel of Jesus can inform, modify, illuminate, judge, and even, even redeem the events of our era. We celebrate that for 150 years, Hyde Park Union Church has done its best to speak the truth, to bind up the wounds, and to be faithful to the gospel of love. Many of you know that we've been following the narrative lectionary this fall, tracing the biblical story from the accounts of creation to the Exodus to the early history of the Israelites. Today's reading from 1 Kings is a section from the dedication of the temple, which King Solomon built as a house for God. It's a fitting text for this day as we celebrate the founding and dedication of this house of God with the understanding that house is not only a physical structure, but first and foremost, a people. This was one of the earliest lessons I was taught about the church as a child. The church, the church is the people. Sacred spaces like this one, they are so important. They serve as hubs for worship, for fellowship, and service. They quite literally, as has been pointed out, bear the names of our ancestors. But a physical space, no matter how grand, cannot contain all that is God. Wise King Solomon recognized this, for in his prayer of dedication, he says, But will God indeed dwell on earth? Even heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, much less this house that I have built. God cannot be contained. God cannot be contained by any house, any definition, any image, any gender, any era, even any one congregation. And isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful that this morning we can celebrate all that God has done in Hyde Park Union Church's 150-year history? And we can rejoice that this doesn't even come close to what God has in store. King Solomon goes on to name his hopes for the temple. He asks that God hear the prayers that come forth from the people who gather there. He asks God to hear the people when they pray for forgiveness, to hear them when they pray for justice, to hear them when they pray for an end to famine and illness, to hear them when they pray for the afflictions of their hearts. He asks that God not only hear the Israelites, but any person who comes to the temple, again, acknowledging that God can't be contained. His is a beautiful prayer for what this house of the Lord will hold. And as I read this section from 1 Kings, it reminded me of the words from Psalm 122 that we heard in our call to worship. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Hyde Park Union Church was founded as a house for the Lord, a congregation where people could come together with prayers in all things and with their prayers in all times. I am glad. I am so glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I am glad to be with a people and part of a people who have come together week after week, year after year, decade after decade, to make meaning of the world through the gospel of Jesus. And I too am glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning as one of the pastors of this historic Hyde Park Union Church, because let's face it, if it had not been for the Lord, Come on. Let, let me say that again. If it had not been for the Lord, 
or to put it in the words of Reverend Parsons, if it had not been for the gospel of Jesus informing and modifying and illuminating and judging and even redeeming the events of this world within this congregation for the past 150 years, I would not be here. We would not be here, Pastor Sarah and I, certainly we would not be here as a biracial female co-pastor team. Our very presence as pastors of this historic church is exhibit A of God's ability to move mountains, mountains of racism and sexism and patriarchy from the pulpit in the Christian church because Pastor Sarah and I are exhibit A of what the founders of the First Baptist Church of Hyde Park 150 years ago likely could never have imagined. Founded on September 10, 1874, nine years after the passing of the 13th Amendment which abolished slavery in these United States, just nine years after, and 46 years before the passing of the 19th Amendment where women received the right to vote, 46 years before women received voice in the vote, our presence as pastors qualifies as exceedingly abundantly above all that one can ask or imagine according to the power that works through God's people. And I'm convinced that most times we aren't even aware that that power is working through us. But it works anyway, hallelujah. Amen. Thanks be to God. That brings me to our New Testament text for today, Luke 18, verses one through eight. Jesus teaches a parable about the persistent widow and the judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. Yet the persistent widow indeed persisted pleading for justice in such a manner that the judge was afraid that she would come and violently attack him. It's in the word. And for this reason, the judge granted the widow's desire for justice. Change can happen when people are willing to persist. But Jesus is saying more than that. Change can happen when people are willing to get into, as the late Congressman John Lewis put it, good trouble. When people are willing to get out of character, that's what the widow did, and, and refuse to accept less than justice, that's what the widow did, refuse to keep to just keep silent and just let things be. See, people got the peace that Jesus called for all wrong. It doesn't mean keep silent and don't ruffle any feathers, I beg to differ. To keep peace, change can happen when people persist in ways that afflict the comfortable in high places. And while Pastor Parsons' words from nearly 50 years ago still apply today, that there are forces shaking our national, national excuse me, life and shaking is not over. While it is true that we are dealing with some of the same evils that have been prevalent in our country since its inception and even were part of its inception, at the same time, thanks be to God for the progress made and the victories won in civil rights and human rights and LGBTQI rights and more. Justice has prevailed for many causes and progressive movements because people, largely people of faith, have, like the widow in the parable, persisted. And yet we must consider the full parable in words of Jesus. As, as Jesus ends the parable, he speaks a word about God, but he asks a question about people. Verse 7 reads, And will not God bring about justice for God's chosen ones who cry out to God day and night? Chosen ones is a whole other sermon. We may get there soon. Will God keep putting them off? I tell you, Jesus says, God will see that they get justice and quickly. 
That's his statement about God. But then he asks a question about humans. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Jesus is illuminating that God is indeed a God of justice who hears the cries of the people. And while quickly is relative, God, do I have any witnesses in the house that God is a deliverer, a liberator, and a redeemer? God will do it. And I celebrate today in the midst of a shaky national life, a shaky local life, and even sometimes a shaky personal life that God is faithful. God will do it. God did this and this. And God can do, I'm convinced, what God is going to do with or without us. You see, while King Solomon asks, will God indeed dwell on the earth? Jesus, being Emmanuel, which means God with us, seems to answer Solomon's question. Asks a different question. He asked, when he returns, whenever that might be, will he find faith on the earth? Don't connect, disconnect it from the parable. Jesus is asking, will I find people like this widow who are faithful to the gospel and are therefore unwilling to accept the status quo, unwilling to accept injustice, unwilling to believe that they are powerless to bring about change? The heavens and the earth can't contain God, so God's going to do what God's going to do, but will there be those who will walk alongside God and be faithful to the gospel, who will bring good news to the poor, recovery sight to the blind, and set the oppressed free? Will there be those whose faithfulness shows up like the widow, who will persist and persist and persist and get in good trouble until, as the prophet Amos says, justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a never-failing stream. Well, it might be hard to find sometimes, but I celebrate the faithful today. I celebrate that there are people in churches and organizations and movements seeking to do justice and love mercy and walk humbly. That while the forces of evil seem to get the spotlight and the news headline, the faithful exist and, as Dr. King said, simply want to do God's will. Yet again, consider the validity of Jesus' question. Will the Son of Man find faith on the earth? There are forces that will never stop trying to stop us. There are so many distractions. I'm going to admit it, I get on Facebook sometime, and before I know it, it's been hour an hour. Searching. Distraction. There is weariness that might hinder our persistence. Church attendance has declined. Jesus' question seems more valid than ever as time continues to progress. Will I find faith on the earth? Jesus presents this question as a hint. I believe that there would be days like this where it appears that the answer could someday be no. Son of man will not find faith on the earth unless the church is intentional about being persistent like the widow against injustice. So we're here to encourage High Park Union Church today as pastors, and we're here to encourage the faithful today, wherever your faith affiliation may be, to persist past distractions. Persist past weariness. Persist and include youthful ideas and energy. Persist past low numbers of membership. Persist and never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed folks can change the world. Like Margaret Mead said, for that's exactly how the world has changed so far. Hyde Park Union Church are planning their bicentennial celebration. They will look back on us. Maybe they will go to this sermon in the same way that I went to that little gray booklet. 
and they will be looking for signs of faithfulness. So let them say, indeed, Hyde Park Union Church remained faithful. Let them say they kept worshiping through a global pandemic. And they did something they'd never done before. They went hybrid and they set up cameras and they stayed connected to one another through it all. all right. Let them say they opened the doors of their sanctuary to feed thousands of people during the pandemic. Bags of food filled the pews even when people could not. Let them say they created an anti-racism and an anti-violence task force to address the social ills of their time and to bend that moral arc of the universe just a little bit further toward justice. And let them say they brought in community leaders and artists and musicians to help find healing for our troubled and weary souls. Let them say they served as a teaching church for dozens of ministry students who heard and answered God's call on their lives. And let them say that they proclaimed the truth of God's radical hospitality, that God is not for any one nation or race or gender or class. God is for the least of these at the margins. From 150 years ago until today, Hyde Park Union Church, You've been active, engaged, thoughtful, and progressive, seeking to do justice and walk with God. You have been faithful. You have made a difference in the world. So let us continue the legacy, along with all of our human siblings who persist for justice and change. Let us be like the persistent widow, High Park Union Church. Let the Son of Man continue to find faith in this house of the Lord. For there is never a shortage of that which should compel us to persist. So let us persist to address environmental injustice for climate change is occurring before our very eyes. The earth is groaning, lives and communities are suffering and we have the power to make a difference. Let us persist in proclaiming the gospel of peace in our own nation and around the globe in calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. Let us persist in being a place where the blatant supremacist ideologies will always be challenged and the virtues of our faith will always be our guide. And let us persist, my friends, in being people of joy. <laughs> joy and love and abundance and hope, for we need those virtues now more than ever. Will the Son of Man find faith on the earth only if people of faith persist? So we thank God on this morning for 150 years of the faithful of Hyde Park Union Church. Let's give God praise for the faithful who were used by God in ways that we can't even name this morning. And we give God thanks for the next 150 years to come. May God continue to do exceedingly, abundantly, mm. above all that we can even ask or imagine according to the power and the persistence that works in us. Amen, 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 amen. and amen. God bless you. Amen.